Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how to make a plastic bag cake. This particular bag has a very tiny, specific pattern on it, and I am going to hand paint it. Yes, you heard me correctly. I am going to hand paint a very tiny pattern. The reason is because I want this to look as much like the real bag as possible, and I think the best way to do that is by hand painting. I hold a drawing for my patrons once a month where one of you gets to help me with a cake design. So if you'd like to enter, you can do that at patreon.com slash sidesurfcakes. So let's get started. Here I have a stencil I drew of the bag that is two size. This helps me check my proportions while sculpting to make sure that everything is spot on. Next comes cake. I have a layer of vanilla cake topped with some vanilla buttercream. This is American buttercream, which I'd say is the easiest buttercream to make and also the sweetest. Next is the second layer of vanilla cake. With a large serrated knife, I cut and rounded out the bottom and top corners of the cake on all sides. I want this bag to look natural, so I didn't make these cuts super perfect. Cutting uneven is actually a good thing. I also cut the corners down so they're more tapered and the cake looks a little less boxy. And finally, I cut away some of the areas on the top corner to look kind of like waves or folds in the bag. Next, I crumb coat the cake by covering the entire thing in a thin layer of buttercream. This helps seal in the cake's moisture and it also gives me a nice smooth surface to place my final layer of modeling chocolate onto. You want to make sure that you spread the buttercream covering the entire top, but also around the edges and those areas that are a bit harder to reach. Now that the entire cake is covered, I place it in the fridge to chill and I start to roll out my white modeling chocolate. The white powder spread on the mat is cornstarch. It'll keep the modeling chocolate from sticking to the mat and sticking to my rolling pin. After about a half hour, I take the cake out of the fridge and I cover it in the modeling chocolate. Then I work the chocolate into the shape of the carved cake. I tuck the edges of the modeling chocolate under the cake on the bottom and the two sides. It's looking a lot like a pillow at the moment. You can trim away any excess modeling chocolate with scissors or a knife. The bottom of the real bag is folded up and adhered to the middle of the bag, so I used a knife and a pointed tool to score a line across the middle, and that's going to represent that fold. Then I sculpt that corner to look as if it's folded too. I think just slightly curling up the corner and trimming it with a blade to make it look nice and clean really helps to make this cake look more realistic. It's like perfectly imperfect. <laughs> to sculpt the outside layer of this cake, I imagined as if this bag is filled with clothing, like the real bag. So it's a bit more full in the center and it has some taut areas with some soft and sharp folds. I even cut up a bag that is made of the same material that the real bag that I'm replicating is made of. And then I used it to add texture to the chocolate. The edges of the real life bag are super, super thin, so to create this effect, I pinched the chocolate with my fingers, and then I took a brand new blade, and I trimmed the chocolate to look like a nice clean line. You can see the edge is super tapered. Sometimes I carefully used my finger to cut, and sometimes I used this plastic knife as a surface to cut against. The knife was safer. I recommend doing this the safe way. I have always approached cakes of objects, like this bag cake, as a still life cake. Do you remember in art class when your teacher would set up a bunch of objects in the center of the room and you would try really hard to paint them as realistically as you could? That is a very common exercise used to teach students painting techniques. 
it's a still life. And it's the same for me when it comes to these cakes. I recreate fruits and vegetables and all these different objects and cake because I'm practicing out new techniques. People ask me how they can learn how to make realistic cakes too. And my best advice is to practice. Practice, practice, practice. I also recommend watching all of my YouTube videos on repeat. That will help you out the most, I promise. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, now is the time. I post a new cake video every single Monday. Just for you all. Everything is sculpted, but before I paint, I cut the logo from the stencil that you saw at the start of this video, and I placed it onto the cake and lightly traced around it with a tool. This is going to help guide me when I paint the logo later. To paint, I use gel food color diluted with clear alcohol like Everclear or a clear extract. This design may look random, but it is actually a very specific pattern. So my goal here is to get as close to that pattern as possible without giving myself carpal tunnel. So I started by painting the larger shapes with a small flat brush, and I tried really hard to repeat each shape and get the spacing correct. Once I finished the larger shapes, I moved on to these smaller shapes that filled in the empty white spaces. Now I have to admit, I gave myself a little bit of a break here by keeping these smaller shapes a little less exact because there were so many of them. So no, the pattern isn't 100% absolutely perfect, but I think in the end, you're not even gonna be able to tell. I mean, I probably shouldn't have even told you. If I just kept my mouth shut, I bet none of you would have even said anything, and now that's all you're gonna see. What was I thinking? <laughs> Anyway, I put five straight hours into painting this cake, so I want everyone to know I tried my best. Since I traced the logo, it wasn't quite as difficult to paint as you might think. I was mostly focused on keeping my hand steady, so I held my breath a little too long during this part trying to get perfectly straight lines and curves. This is the part that you want to do once the coffee wears off. Easy does it. Don't mess up. Oi! <laughs> Getting major anxiety. To paint the, oh, hello, tab, I painted the area green, and then I painted in the negative space black. If I painted the entire area black and I tried to paint in green over top, the green would look super dark and it would mix with the black, it would barely show through. It definitely wouldn't look as nice and vibrant as the green on the real bag. Once, oh, hello, is finished, I went back to holding my breath and I painted more of those perfectly straight lines. I took a similar approach to the small dots. I painted a green line, I painted small hashes across the green line in black, and then I painted straight lines across the top and the bottom, working my way towards the center until the green became itty bitty little dots. This made my life so much easier than painting individual dots and then painting black around each dot. Can you even imagine? I mean, I would have done it, but with just a little bit of planning, I really dodged a tedious bullet. And there you have it, a realistic bag cake with an extremely detailed pattern. I really like this bag. I found some new techniques and I'm going to use them again. All right, let's cut the cake, my favorite part. Don't forget
forget to like this video. When you like this video, we like you because it helps us out a lot. <laughs>